Hey everyone, today we are going to look at a library called HTMX, which you can use to dynamically load content in your applications, except that this is a departure from our modern approach where we download JSON, parse it into an object, and then pass that data on down to a view or React component. Instead, HTMX wants us to generate fully formed HTML, and it will fetch that data and inject it into our page. And one of the great things is we don't have to write any JavaScript to do that. All we need to use are attributes in our HTML. Now at htmx.org, just scroll on down to the quick start and copy the script element for that library. That's all you need. Just drop that into your application and you're good to go from there. So I have a Laravel application, which might seem a little overkill for an example, but we need to generate HTML so that we can load that. So Laravel does a very good job of that. And let's start with a very simple example to where we will have a button. And when we click on the button, we will download content from the server and inject that somewhere inside of our page. You know, that's what we do most of the time. We react to something that the user does, get content, and load it into the page. But with HTMX, we just need to use one attribute to do that. It's called hxget, the idea being that we are going to perform a get request for whatever URL is going to serve that content. So in our case, let's do a hello world, and we will create that route here in a moment. But if we have a get attribute, it kind of goes without saying that we would have attributes for making a post request or a put request or a delete. If it's a valid HTTP method, then we can do that using HTMX. We just have to use the appropriate attribute. But in our case, we want to make a get request. So let's do that. And then let's create that route. Now, when it comes to our closure, we can return just about anything. As long as the browser can render whatever we return, then we're great. So it can be a simple string. It can be a string of HTML. We can return a view and we can load JavaScript or CSS as long as it is inside of HTML. So if it's JavaScript, it needs to be inside of a script element. If it's CSS, it needs to be inside of a style or a link element. So in this case, let's just return a P element that says hello world. And in the browser, whenever we click on that button, it is going to download that content and inject that. Now, notice though that it replaced the content inside of the button. But if you think about it, it makes perfect sense because the button received the click event. So therefore... HTMX made the request, received the response, and it replaced the content of whatever element received the initial event, which was the button. Now, ideally, we would load that content someplace else, and we can easily do that by using another attribute called HX target. So we would specify the target of where we want that content to be loaded. And we simply use a CSS selector to denote what element that is. So this is going to place that content inside of an element that has an ID of content. I'm going to make this a div element. Let's also give it some styling. But we don't need to put anything inside of that element because if we did, then it would just get erased whenever the content is loaded. So with that in place, whenever we click on the button, we will see that content loaded inside of our div element. And that's it as far as the concept is concerned. We use attributes to denote what URL to make a request to and then where we want to load that data. But let's look at a real world example. Let's implement a search box. So I already have a view set up for our search UI. I'm going to return the search view for our default route so that we can take a look at that. It's just a simple input element followed by a button. But whenever we click on the button, we will, of course, make a request for our search. But let's start off by loading some content. I have some articles that we want to search. And we will start off by fetching all of those articles. So I have a model called article. We'll just fetch all of them. 
and we will return a view, but we don't want to return the search view in this case. We want to return a view that is strictly for displaying the results. So we're going to need to create a new view called search results, and then we will pass on our results to that view. So let's create the search results dot blade dot php file and since we have a collection of things we want to iterate over that collection so let's go ahead and do our for each results as result and then we just need to display our results let's start off with a containing element that has some padding and some margin at the top but then we will have another div element where we are going to display the article information. And we have two pieces of information for each article. We have a title and a description. So let's put the title inside of an H3 element. Let's also set the font to semi-bold. And here we will simply just output the uh, title of the article. And as far as the description is concerned, we don't need anything fancy, so a P element is going to work just fine there. But we do need to go back to the search view because we need to set up our form to submit the appropriate request. So whenever we click on the button, we want to perform our GET request for the search URL, and we want to set the target for where the content will load inside of an ID that has search results. We can see that that div element is right down here. So with all of that in place, we should be able to load all of our articles when we click on the button, but there's a syntax error somewhere. It's inside of web.php line 30. So let's take a look there. We need a semicolon after defining that route. So that should fix that. So whenever we click on the search button, we should see our list, but we don't. But one of the great things about HTMX is that it's primarily all HTTP requests. So we can inspect the requests and see what went wrong so that we can debug and fix whatever issues. So let's pull up our developer tools, go to the network tab, let's click on the search button, and we can see that nothing is happening. So a request is not being sent. Instead, there's an error popping up. So let's take a look at this target error and let's see what that error is. Well, that's not very helpful at all, is it? So let's go to our search view and there's the problem. The target was set to search result, not search results. So with that in place, let's click on the search button and there we have our list of articles. So that's perfect, but we of course want to be able to search that, which means that we need to grab the value from the input element and include that with the HTTP request. And that's easy enough to do. All we need is another attribute to our button. It's called HX include. The idea being that we want to include some more data with the request. And if you guessed that we specify the CSS selector of whatever value we want to include, you are correct. You don't win anything, but you're correct. So we want to include the value of the input element. So we just need a CSS selector to select that element. And really the only defining thing that we have is the name attribute. So our selector will be for the name attribute of search term that will grab the value, include that with the HTTP request, which means that we need to grab that from the query string inside of our route. So let's do that. The first thing we need though is our request. So let's get our request and then we will grab that data from the query string. However, we do need to make sure that we have a value in our query string before we try to use it. So let's check to see if our search term is an empty string, then we are going to do what we were doing before and just display all of our articles. Otherwise, we need to perform an actual query where the title is like whatever our search term is. Now, ideally, we would do a search on both the title and the description. But for this example, just searching the title is going to be fine. We see everything. If we search for JavaScript, 
then we should see only the JavaScript articles. If we search for PHP, we should see only the PHP articles. And that's awesome. That's fantastic. But let's take this a step further. Let's add some pagination because imagine if we have a thousand articles, we would definitely want to page through all of that information. So let's go back to our route because this is where we will start with the pagination and we'll just start with a variable called page size and we'll have just a relatively small page size because we have a relatively small amount of data so small data small page and instead of calling the all method we will call paginate and then pass in our page size and instead of calling the get method we will call paginate, passing in our page size. And now that we will have some pages, we need to go to the search results view and we need to add our page links. So we'll do that by using our results. We will call the links method and that will get us our page links. So that now, whenever we search for PHP, we see our links. Let's click on one and we see that it kind of worked, but not really, because there are two issues. First of all, is the most obvious is that it loaded the URL search at page two, which of course it did. But the second issue is that it is pulling all of our articles. It's not just searching based upon PHP. In that last case, we are seeing JavaScript stuff as well. And so here's the thing. The reason why is because, of course, these links need to be changed so that we can use HTMX to dynamically load that content as well as include the search term. And the way that we can do that is by loading the vendor pagination templates. So we can do that by going to the command line. We'll say PHP artisan vendor publish. The tag is going to be Laravel dash pagination. And that's going to give us all of the views for the pagination links. And it's not just going to be for Tailwind. We will also see the views for Bootstrap and things like that. But we can go to views and then vendor. And then we have several views. The one that we are interested in is Tailwind. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it inside of views, but it would be best if we rename this because this view is going to be specific for the pagination of search results. So let's do search pagination.blade.php. Now, one thing we will need to do before anything else, or, or rather before I forget to do that, is to go to the search results view. And where we call the links method, we want to specify our new view for the pagination links. So that is simply search pagination, and then that's going to be good there. Everything else we are going to do will be inside of the search pagination view. But let's do this. Let's go to our search view. Let's copy the get, target, and include attributes because we need all of that information so that we can include them inside of the pagination links. And here we need to search for href. Any place that there is an href inside of our pagination view, we want to use the HTMX attributes. So here for this A element, we will add in the get, target, and include attributes, but we want to change the value of the get attribute. We want to use whatever is inside of the href attribute. So we will copy that and paste that for hx get. And then that is going to work for whatever link this is for. So let's copy all of that, go to the next href attribute, and we will paste in the hx attributes. Once again, we need to change the URL, but everything else can stay the same. I believe there are five references to href inside of this view. So you will need to go through all of them and make the necessary changes. It's a little tedious, but it's worth it in the end. But once you've gone through this view and and you've added the HTMX attributes every place you see an href attribute, then everything is ready to go and it's ready to rock. So let's go back to the browser. Let's search for nothing. That's going to load all of our articles. And as we click on these links for our pagination, we can see that it is being dynamically loaded inside of our content area. 
It's not navigating to the search URL. But let's see if we can page our search results. So let's search for JavaScript. And we should only see JavaScript items. And it looks like that is indeed the case. Let's search for PHP. We will see a shorter list, but all of these page links work. Now, we've barely scratched the surface of what we can do with HTMX, but it is a fantastic library. And it has a lot of developers excited myself included, because it takes us back to a time of much simpler web development. And the fact that we can just drop it in and use it is phenomenal. So give it a shot.